Hey all, this is Derek, and this is section 9.4. Uh, this is logarithmic function. And so I'm going to go through some definitions for the log function and just some of the characteristics and then some of the notation as well. So this will probably take a minute here. Um, so log function um, with the form f of x equals log base b of x. Um, so this is, let me go ahead and write that a little bit bigger. Instead of f of x, I'm going to write it with a y base b of x. So the same, the um, x has to be greater than zero. I'll show you that in a second. B has to be greater than zero and B cannot equal one is the same restrictions we saw in the base for the exponentials in the last section. Um, log base B of X is red, log base B of X. Um, and then this is equivalent to this statement over here. B raised to the Y equals X. I actually prefer the y on that side when I'm doing this. So I think of it as b raised to the y equals x. So y is the exponent we raise b to in order to get x. Um, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to do this with numbers and see if I can make this make a little bit of sense because with the letters it doesn't really make very much sense, or at least it didn't when I was a student. Um, this was a thing that I kind of kept repeating myself over and over to kind of make sense of logarithms. So this would read log base 10 of 100 equals 2. And the reason for that is 10 squared, 10 squared equals 100. So what this is asking is, what power do I need to raise this base to? What power do I raise 10 to to make it come out to 100? And then the answer to that is 2. So what logs do is they find exponents. We're used to knowing the exponent and finding the 100. We're used to thinking of it in the exponential form. 10 squared makes 100. But now we're saying, what do I raise 10 to to get 100? OK, answer's 2. So that's what a log does. This is the inverse of an exponential. So that's why, uh, again, inverse functions were in this chapter is because of the relationship between logs and exponentials. Um, if you go back and look at um, the exponentials, they had a horizontal asymptote. It was y equals 0. And then their domain, that was the one that was the negative infinity to infinity. Range, that was the one from 0 to infinity. And so if you look, everything is just exactly backwards between logs and exponentials because, again, of that inverse relationship. Um, <clears throat> so in this section, we'll be working, kind of getting back and forth between these two forms a bunch and some things that we can do with that. We are also going to run into some notation. So we have this general form where the base is B. It could be anything. Um, and we have a couple that we use a lot, so they kind of get their own notation. Uh, so much the same way that square root doesn't get a 2 there. It's just implied. And anything higher than that, if it's a cube root, then we have to say so. If we do not put a log or a base in a logarithm, that is an invisible 10. So that implies the same way that nothing there implies that that's a square root. Nothing here implies that that's a uh, base 10, and that's going to be called common log. Um, we're also going to we're going to get this new number, and it's e. E is um, approximately 2.718 goes on forever. Um, it's an irrational number like pi. And it turns out to be the easiest function to work with in calculus. Uh, you end up absolutely loving y equals e to the x uh, once you hit 151. So this e is also very common, so it's going to get its own notation, and that's natural log. And natural log is abbreviated ln. Um, a lot of times people think that's an i, and it's a lowercase l log natural. I blame the French. I don't know if it was really the French. but. Ln x, this means the same thing as log base e of x. So that base, this is what ln says. And then for all of these, we have their exponential form. Uh, so if I have log base b of x to the y, that's our b to the y equals x. Uh, here, where it is log equals y, and there wasn't a 10 there, that's where we have to think 10 to the y makes x. And when we see ln x equals y, that we're thinking invisible e. And so its exponential form is uh, e to the y equals x. This is an exponential equation. It's the exponential form of a log. And I'll, I'll show you that again in a second as well. So these first couple of questions are just having you practice going back and forth between the forms. 
So um, rewrite this in exponential form. So again, I just think base to the answer makes the argument. So 13 to the L equals H. Uh, this next one where there's nothing there, there's our invisible 10. So this would be 10 raised to the S is going to equal R. ln A equals B. So for that one, we have to envision that little invisible E in the base. So E to the B makes A. And then next, we're going the other direction. So we're given the exponential form and asked to find log. So for me, when I'm going this direction, I think, okay, the base stays the same. So this is going to be log base 4. And that's the other two things that are switching sides, right? The exponent's the answer. The answer is then the, the argument of the log. So of 17 equals f. So I just kind of think of those trading places. Here, I could write this as log base 10 of x equals the exponent y, or I could also call it log x, because I don't need to write that 10. I could just use common log. And then for e, that's where we have to use ln. Um, log base e, we basically never write that other than to explain it. Uh, so this would be natural log of y equals the exponent, which in this case is x. Okay, so then next we're doing the same thing, um, except now they're equations and we're trying to solve for an x. So for this first one, um, if I ask myself what power to, um, th th God, I can't even say it, okay. <coughs> okay, this next round is similar, except here we are having an x in the equation, so we have an unknown, so we're actually solving an equation. And we'll do that the same way, though. Um, in this form, log base 3 of x equals negative 4 just kind of bounces off your brain. But if you write this in exponential form, 3 to the negative 4th equals x, all of a sudden you're a lot closer to getting to the answer. 3 to the negative 4th, remember, would be 1 over 3 to the 4th. And then cleaning that up, 3 to the 4th is 81. So 1 over 80. 1 would be x. Um, this one, there's our little invisible 10. So 10 to the third makes x. And 10 to the third is 1,000. So that's the one with three zeros. And then this one, remember invisible e there. So e to the seventh makes x. And this one just wants the exact solution. So just e to the seventh is what you would put in in that case. Okay, so next up we have these kind of formulas or the inverse properties. The idea of this is if I had <coughs> the square root of x squared, it makes x. And that's because the square root and x squared are, are inverse to each other, so they undo each other and get x. That's the same as what these are going to do. Um, let me show you with one of these, and then um, once I do that, the other three basically work the same way, same logic. Um, but let me just kind of show one of them and how it would work. So say on this one we had um, 10 raised to the log base 10 of 100. So there's that same log base 10 of 100 I was using on the last page. So log base 10 of 100, that's asking what power do I raise 10 to get 100? So this right here is really a fancy 2. And now 10 squared makes 100. So if you notice, I put in 100, and where I ended up was right back at the 100. So what this is saying is you can skip all that stuff in between and just say whatever this is is how that's going to come out. And that's kind of how all of those properties work. <coughs> um, it's, it's the exact same thing. It's just you're raising to a power and taking log. Um, so with these, it's if it looks terrible, it's probably one of these properties, which all these look a little terrible. And so you just kind of have to figure out which one you're looking at. So here's one that's just like what I just did, because there's nothing there, so there's that invisible 10. So that big mess is 73, and that's it. So it's just kind of recognizing it for what it is. Likewise, here we got e to the ln of something is just the something. So it's the 1.59, because ln of something would make a power, and then e to that power gets me right back to the same something. Um, here, ln of e raised to the 2.4, that's just going to be 2.4. Um, this one we do got to do one little step. 
So that cube root there on the 11, it feels like the 11s are gonna end up matching, but I need to write that as a power. So remember that cube root is the same thing as one third, and now I've made it look like this. So this mess is the same thing as one third. Um, log of one plus seven, so log of one is zero. And the reason for that is if I think of this as what power do I raise 10 to to get one, Remember, anything raised to the zero, except for zero, equals one. So anytime we see a log one or an ln one, those are both zeros. So this is just zero plus seven, so that's just seven. And then ln one, like I just said, is zero. Uh, these couple down here are just to have you find the log button on your calculator. And so for this one, this would be a base 10 log. And if you put that into three decimal places, I got one point six seven seven uh, which makes sense what do i raise 10 to to get 47 10 to the first would be 10 10 to the second would be 100 so it seems like it, it's going to be between one and two which is exactly what we got and then natural log of 10 again made to make you find that button uh 2.303 is what you should get there <clears throat> okay so then last i'm going to go through a little bit of graphing um, on the computer, it's just going to be matching problems like this and some uh, domain and vertical asymptote problems. But I'm going to show this how you graph on paper uh, just because I think it, you kind of need to have at least that introduction for the computer piece to make sense. So if I were going to graph this, and again, I'm going to write the Y over here because I like it better on that side. Um, I would write this in a form that like log base 5 of X equals Y. Again, it just kind of bounces off your brain. But if I write that in exponential form, it's much more comfortable. Five to the something is going to make something. So what I do here, it's, it's just the same form as our exponential. <clears throat> and remember for our exponential function, that would have been five to the X equal Y. For this one, if I find the inverse, I would swap the X's and Y's, and that's exactly what this is. So this, this log is just the inverse of this exponential that we saw in the last section. Um, in this case, if I were going to graph it on paper, I would pick y because it's easier than picking x. So I pick y is negative 1, and I get x is 1 fifth. I pick y is 0, I get 1. I pick y is 1, and I get 5. And so what I get is this graph that is, not surprisingly, inverse uh, to the what we got in the last section. And that 1 fifth is kind of somewhere around there. And so what a, a basic log graph is going to look like is this very, very slow-growing thing. Because think about next, to go up one more unit, to make this get up to 2, I would have to put in 25. So the same way that exponentials grow really fast, let me toss this exponential in just as reference. So that's y equals 5 to the x, and this one is x equals 5 to the y. So that's a log, and then this one is an exponential. So exponentials grow super fast, logs grow super slow, again, inverse to each other. There's that symmetry about the origin that we folded about the y and y equals x. Uh, like I said earlier, the domain for a log is the, the range of the exponential, so it's going to be zero to infinity. So notice the domain on these is restricted. Um, so when we go to solve for domain x greater than zero, that's going to be the key to figuring that out. Um, the range is all real numbers, because now it goes forever down, and it slowly climbs forever up. And this time, instead of having a horizontal asymptote, we have a vertical asymptote. Remember, those are x equals, and so in this case, x equals 0 instead of y equals 0. And for a vertical asymptote, that's right there. And again, that vertical asymptote is going to end up limiting our domain. Okay, so first up, we've got choose the graph uh, log base 3 of x. So that is growing fast. That is an exponential. Um, that is an exponential that's been reflected, right? Because it's decaying fast. So that is not it. Um, that looks like something that is growing slowly, which this should be. Um, if I wanted to check this, I could say 3 to the y equals x. And then test a couple of points. When x is 0, y should be... Oops, I did that backwards x, y. When y is 0, x should be 1, and when y is 1, x should be 3. So there's 
x is 1, y is 0, x is 3, y is 1, just to kind of confirm. So you can see this one would have been a, a reflection, um, and that would be the correct one. So we pick here. This next example, they're all logarithms. Um, this time we have this x plus 2 inside. So if I'm thinking of the domain of this, x plus 2 has to be greater than 0. So I'm going to move that 2 over, and x has to be greater than negative 2. So that tells me that this has um, a domain of negative 2 to infinity. And I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote, sorry, vertical asymptote, at uh, x equals negative 2. And so this one, there's no reflection, so that looks like it has to be this one right here then, because there's that vertical asymptote at negative 2. And yep, that would be it. Sorry, I also meant to say uh, an easy way to look at this is that the graph got shifted 2 to the left. I wanted to show the domain then and forgot to say that at the end. Okay, and then here's why I wanted to show the domain, because it's the next couple problems. Um, so here, all I got to do is say 2x minus 6. That has got to stay greater than or equal to 0, because we can't put negatives into logs. Um, bring the 6 over. 2x greater than 6, divide that over, and then x is greater than 3. So my domain would be from 3 to infinity, and that's because I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So the domain and the vertical will go together the same way that the range and the horizontal work together for the uh, exponentials. And then this one, 4 minus x greater than 0, we bring that 4 over, negative x is greater than negative 4. And then here's that spot to be a little careful. I am multiplying both sides by negative 1, which means I have to reverse the direction of the equality. <clears throat> so that's going to be x is less than 4. So that one's been reflected, which makes sense because there's a negative on that x on the inside. And that was our reflection across the y-axis. So this is going to go from negative infinity up to 4 with a vertical asymptote at x equals 4.